What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out when Randy Orton turned face in 2014 by wrestling career. Uh, I've been looking forward to checking this video out and I felt like this was the perfect moment to check this out since it's been confirmed that Randy Orton will be returning back into wrestling action at this year's Survivor Series and he's gonna be a part of Cody's team in war games so it only makes sense to check out a video talking about randy orton turning face back in the day and uh it, it just makes sense man i've seen a lot of you guys wanting me to check out some more randy orton content so that's what we're gonna do for you guys man and also i want to wish everyone a happy thanksgiving for those who celebrate it man hope you guys are enjoying the food hope you guys are uh enjoying the the family and friend time and just always remember be thankful for the loved ones. Be thankful for you know, the family and friends. And just be thankful for just being alive and being able to see this day. Uh, I just want y'all to know, I am very thankful for y'all, man. Every day I wake up trying to make some content for you guys to enjoy. You guys have changed my life for the better. I know my purpose in life and that is to entertain you guys and I just want to say I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys that have subscribed, that has liked, that has commented. Even if it wasn't positive, I appreciate the criticism, all that, man. I appreciate all you guys and I'm very thankful for y'all. So let's get right into this one. It should be a good one. Let's check out um, when Randy Orton said, you know what, I'm going to be a good guy just for a little bit. Randy Orton's time as a face had run its course by 2013. WWE thought a heel turn would result in a fresh change for the Viper as early on he wasn't struggling but Orton was not on the same level he was from 2010 to 2011. Mm -hmm. He was always in and out of the main event scene with no title reign to show for it. Guys like Jack Swagger were challenging for the title at WrestleMania his name wasn't even in contention from the summer of 2012 to the summer of 2013. It probably had to do with the wellness policy violation. The money in the bank opened a lot of possibilities and by the end of it Randy Orton was back at the forefront front in the main event of mm -hmm. Wrestlemania. The heel turn did wonders for him because as I said he was not struggling they just chose not to put him at the very top. His spot in the authority and storyline was mostly safe until Seth Rollins joined the group. Mm -hmm. This put things in jeopardy because Triple H and Stephanie were mostly favoring the young guy over the established 12 time champion. The preferential treatment of Rollins was slowly starting to piss off Orin not to mention Rollins dropped him with a curb stomp on Raw. He was boiling, his demeanor was becoming unpredictable, mm -hmm. and Triple H had to calm him down. The fans were loving this though. The COO wanted to deal with this at a later time, but Orin wasn't having it. He basically disobeyed the authority <laughs> and in turn made himself a dead man walking. The Viper's actions the following week only added fuel to the fire. Man, this was good. This 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 transition. The transition they have from him being a part of the authority and him being that that good heel figure that, you know. That we all have grown accustomed to in Randy Orton to seeing how things were playing out, how the, you know, uh, Triple H and Stephanie were looking at looking at Seth Rollins as the next guy up and kind of slowly but surely phasing Randy Orton to the back and him seeing that. Ah, oh, this 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 heel turn was very, very entertaining. Now, not heel turn, this face turn was very entertaining. And after demanding a match against the architect, it was granted. The man lost his train of thought, and by the looks of it, it wasn't coming back. Rollins ended up winning the match, and it was a tough pill to swallow, but he did come to terms with it for all of two seconds. It was costly. At this point, Triple H was like, screw it. He saved Rollins from a punt, and after a failed attempt at calming things down, he mm -hmm. was out. This man was full on 2010 Randy Orton. Zero yeah. logic, all emotion, and in the heat of the battle. He took a curb stomp on the announce table, and the game didn't really want to continue, but Stephanie told him to finish this. And a friend of old, the guy he brought in, basically his own kid, he ended up taking out. This yep. was done to give Randy Orton a hiatus. I believe he was, uh, he was shooting a movie. But Orton was away. We all know how the story was going to continue, of course, but it was going to take a while. Mm -hmm. Randy Orton returned at Fastlane and dropped everybody in sight except for Seth Rollins. The architect ran away with a look of fear in his face. And this feud was going to continue. Yes. He came out the next night on Raw to discuss his disappearance. He was fuming and said that this was only the beginning and said that it was a state of execution for Seth Rollins. And this is when the authority without the architect came out. Stephanie was still trying to get him back in the authority, but Orin had one intention, to take out Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. It was a situation where they were forced to take him out and Stephanie was so desperate to move past this, 
and look forward. To him, he'd rather kick ass than kiss ass. <laughs> the Big Show tried to convince him to rejoin the group, the Authority, but it was like selling out. Stephanie thought it was ironic Orn was taking the high ground because he was committing even bigger crimes in the past, even to her on multiple mm -hmm. occasions. Regardless, though, they want. And that's what I like about this, because it's like, hmm, it's crazy. You would take this high ground purpose where, you know, it wasn't that long ago that you fucking gave me a DDT. <laughs> in the ring while my husband was tied up or had was handcuffed to the ropes and couldn't help me and you kissed me while i was knocked out it wasn't too long ago where you kicked my father in the head and my brother in the head you punted him in the head we ain't forget so now you want to be a good guy what <laughs> love it <laughs> wanted him to come back home this By is great it was a no as they're walking up the ramp Orin had a change of thoughts he called for a meeting in the back and when it came time for it seth Rollins looked terrified but was mm -hmm. still able to talk about his worries of Orin rejoining the authority stephanie was insistent on this but the rest weren't her intentions came true though and the authority was back on the same page Rollins and Orin teamed up in the main event but there were some problems the viper was more experienced and his instinct knew what was about to go down so he wanted to tag in but Rollins ended up refusing to do so and cost them the match. Mm. Right afterwards, the architect was laying in the same exact position many have in the past. Jane J got involved, paid the price, but Orton wasn't going to do anything. It was clear, though, that at any time... And this was good. This was... It was the teasing. Because we knew Randy was going to strike. We just didn't know when, and that's what I like about it. They didn't go right into it. They built up to it. It was like, all right. We're going to wait. And the whole idea of this is Randy being able to strike whenever he wants. And Seth knew that. And that's what made this good. He's like, I can get you whenever I need to. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait till your guard is completely down. And then it's over for you. This is so fun. And he was going to strike. And Rollins was uh, quite weary of that. He, he was well aware of the fact that Randy Orton was a snake. He was going to end up RKOing him eventually. In the meantime, he was by Seth Rollins' side. Orton yeah. was officially welcomed back into the authority. And all of these guys were talking good, sucking up to him. Jamie Noble had his reservations about him, though. The future of the WWE was very comfortable about things. And he didn't even consider the possibility of Orton turning on him at this moment. He thought about it last week, but things had calmed down since then. His return to the group was met with strong criticism. Not uh -huh. from the guys, but the contrary orton was trashing all of them he called yeah. kane a dumbass big show a whiner jamie noble's irrelevant in short yeah. he didn't even talk to joey mercury nope. and seth rounds he planned to make him his bitch yep. but this was all jokes fast forward yeah to that's what made this so funny it's like yeah bro he was cooking everybody and then he was like yeah i'm gonna make you my bitch i'm just playing bro lighten up i'm not about to hurt you I'm not about to hurt you. <laughs> the end of the night, Randy Orton finally made his intentions yep. known. He thought it was shameful that Rollins didn't think he would do something about it. He followed with a PG beat down on the architect. A five minute assault with Orton launching oh, him into the so announce good. table, DDTing him on the barricade, and to top it all off, an RKO to the announce table. The authority expressed <laughs> deep regret for letting him in, and Orton ended up challenging the architect Seth Rollins to a match at WrestleMania. This was accepted. However, Rollins wanted to match on Raw. Yes. There was a bad intention there, and Orton was well aware of that. If all five of the Authority members come out, he has enough venom in him, and if he gets taken out, then he'll be even more motivated to retaliate at WrestleMania. That thought came out true. The Authority were here. One chair wasn't going to absolve him of this attack, but he was going to go out swinging. Sting, though, mm -hmm. was more than gracious to help, and yeah, this image cool. is crazy. It's almost yeah. surreal, the fact that Randy Orton and Sting stood in the same... That was so fucking cool, bro. Oh, they fucked this moment up with sting dog it, it is still one of the most infuriating what could have been moments in wwe damn near in wrestling history that they fucked this up they there's no reason on god's green earth that sting should be losing at his very and only appearance out of wrestlemania there's no reason why other than pettiness from vince mcmahon and I think a little bit of, with Triple H too. I ain't gonna absolve Triple H of all of this, but this was a cool visual. 
same ring side by side it's weird it's it's very odd now it doesn't seem odd when you look at it from that time period you didn't think stink would come to wwe let yeah. alone stand next to randy orton in the same ring they cleared house and the momentum was still on orton's side he was almost unstoppable ahead of wrestlemania and seth Rollins refused to come near he lost a handicap match to the viper on the final round before wrestlemania and that was the build that's the build randy orton had an almost uncontrollable rage that couldn't be contained mm -hmm. Rollins' status as the face or the future of wwe was coming to question and it was very one-sided which I think is right because they took him out in the beginning. Mm -hmm. WWE was clearly thinking ahead here and Rounds had some other plans. So you have to heat up Randy Orton. Now every time I see this WrestleMania, I'm gushing over it. The vibe, Santa Clara, California, mm -hmm. the sun's out, man. It was perfect. As for Orton and Rollins, good. The Viper changed it up wearing red trunks and elbow pads. And he was basically a modern version of his 2004 self, look-wise. One thing to notice is that this man was even more energetic and exciting yeah. than previous. <laughs> he found a great combination on this night of his experienced self and his young self. Seth Rollins, on the other hand, you know 2015 rounds. But the match clicked because it wasn't trying to be anything special. The only thing that was different was, as I said, Orn was more eccentric. He was more exciting. There was something in the air that day about him. And best of all was the oh, mid-air RKO. I Ooh. swear, Orn was wilding on this night. He felt so reinvigorated. This and I don't know so what good. it was, but it was so <laughs> fresh. It was yep. just his attitude. So what made this match different compared to others was his energy. It was good. You felt that he was more in tune and eager to put on a show. Seth Rollins, though, had the last laugh as he mm -hmm. cashed in money in the bank to become champion by the end of the night. He rained down Rollins' parade saying regardless of being champion, he beat him at WrestleMania. Basically, he wanted to do it again for the title. Mm. Kane had enough of this and demanded respect, and in an effort to test Randy Orton, he made a match between himself and the Viper. DQ finish. Orn was hurting, but he was prepared for the number one contender's main event. This match was chaotic. Everyone was involved, but Orn stood victorious for all of five seconds because Rollins had yep. the curb stomp. Both men had a confrontation the following week over the stipulation, and Rollins had his choice. The RKO was banned. And this yeah. man was more comfortable than a baby at night. But now, it was Orn's choice. And this was this is what made that, that kind of cool. The RKO is banned. You can't use it. So how is Randy Orton going to overcome this that's it's his secret well not even a secret weapon that's just his his best weapon that's the weapon that he's won so many well not weapon well essentially i guess you could say it is a weapon but that's the move he's won so many championships with how is he gonna overcome this and the authority to stop seth rollins he wanted to take away rollins's best weapon the authority so he chose a steel cage match he flipped over rounds, threw J and J security around, and sent them running. The RKO was going away for extreme rules, so Orn decided to pull something straight out of the Attitude Era. A night full of chaos. He gave everyone a preview of extreme rules. Rounds came out and said he's the best at this game, and he had praises for Randy Orn, but assured him he won't be the champion. He told him to get it all of his system, and he was like, say no more, I'm on an RKO everybody I see. Mm. Best of all, he promised to RKO Seth Rounds before Raw ended, and that's exactly- And this was so good, too. This was so good. Him just going around RKOing RK people was fantastic, bro. Just to hype up for this match. That was so exactly good. Exactly what happened. He RKO'd the New Day. He yep. slayed her in the back. Yep. The Miss. Yep. And Seth Rollins was so yep. distracted by the drama with Kane that he completely forgot about the Viper. He made good on his promise. Triple H was mad. Kane was elated. And Rand Yarn was in a nice position ahead of Extreme Rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. Their match at Extreme Rules didn't really hit that hard. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate, but the steel cage kind of hurt these two. It was supposed to prevent the others from entering, but that's exactly what happened. But that's the problem with WWE booking steel cages. You know someone's going to get involved. Like in War Games, I am truly expecting Rhea Ripley to get involved, and I am expecting Randy Orton to handle it. Simple. If there's a cage, there's going to be some interference. That's just how it is. <laughs> I said Rollins and Orn were just better suited in another situation. Uh, it would have been better if they were actually facing off in a, literally an Extreme Rules match. I think that would have made more sense match-wise. Story-wise, yeah. Orin, of course, wanted to prevent the authority from interfering, so that made sense. Rounds RKO'd Orin to steal the victory, and it would have been better if it was another match. Yeah. Orin wanted a rematch, but the problem was Rounds turned him down. Roman Reigns wanted a title match too. Kane saw things differently and was willing to give them a chance. The fans were going to choose them. And when it came down to it, they chose a triple threat match. The Viper was more than confident about his chances. Roman Reigns, though, was quick to shut him up and made mention of their history in the past. Problem was, Randy had 12 world championships, so mm. he's used to the situation. He actually won matches involving the world title. They had an even bigger problem.
problem though because Dean Ambrose got himself a title shot as well so it was a fatal four-way match very exciting match at payback fatal mm -hmm. four-ways always hit but this one was a hidden gem it, it yeah. really was it's pretty damn fun you should go watch it. I watched it for this video of course it was nice it was a W match Rowles retained the title to move on and continue his feud with Dean Ambrose whereas Orin went elsewhere Following payback, Randy Orton slowly developed a feud with Sheamus. These two were having intense brawls. Sheamus tried taking out Orin after his match with Kane, or during his match with Kane, which was a no DQ match, and he disappeared. And upon his return, Orin dropped the Celtic Warrior with an RKO. Love he wanted to, see to rip it. the Mohawk off his fat head and shove it up his ass. That's exactly what he said in a promo, and this led to a match at Battleground. They had a decent match at Battleground with Orin winning because Sheamus had the money in the bank curse. Their feud was mostly consisting of six man tag team matches. Not the money Orin in the was bank usually curse. on top, but Sheamus hit him where it hurts most. Okay, this is how it goes The Viper had gotten himself a title shot against Seth Rollins for the main event of the August 10th, 2015 episode of Raw. Orin had his hands on the title during the match, but Sheamus cost him the match. He tries cashing in, but the Viper rebinded with an RKO, so they were equal. Their match at SummerSlam was once again decent, but this time around, Sheamus beat Orin clean, which was crazy. Yeah. Crazy because this man was losing every match, and here yeah. he is being Randy Orin. And it's not like Sheamus wasn't an established star or anything like that. It's just Sheamus was very uh, cowardly as Mr. Money in the Bank. This feud wasn't really detailed. Both men only interacted in matches. Very rarely would they speak. Otherwise, I would have mentioned it for this video. Orton won the rubber match on the September 7th, 2015 episode of Raw to move on. But right after the match, the lights went out and the Wyatt family mm. respawned. Wyatt went for strikes. Strowman choked him out, slammed him on the mat. Mm -hmm. Randy Orton was yet another victim of the Wyatt family. JBL explained things. So at the time, Ambrose and Reigns wanted a partner for Night of Champions and Orton was a potential candidate. Upon Orin's return, he saved Ambrose and Reigns from an attack and cleared house. The feud was supposed to transition towards Randy Orin and the Wyatts. Roman was busy with Bray, whereas Dean and Orin were dealing with the other three. Both men had trust issues, Dean more so, and Orin literally said he can't even trust himself. But right afterwards, Orin suffered a shoulder injury in a tag team match against the New Day. This was a big injury. It wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be as big as it once looked, but it was. On this injury, the legend killer said, and I quote, I had a match October 12th in Chicago. My shoulder got stretched back and I had a repair 12 years ago that was destroyed. I had oh, a little pain, damn. got an MRI, and was told they had to fix my shoulder again, Orin explains. Damn. I had a new guy do it and had a stabilization done that they do to rugby players get. And there's some tough customers. This came at a terrible time because yeah. WWE was preparing for WrestleMania 32. John Cena got injured, Seth Rollins, Sting. That's why Shane McMahon returned. It was uh -huh. tough, and I'm sure the Viper would have been in a marquee match. There was a rumor at the time he injured himself taking a trash out. The Wrestling Observer reported what? this, but I didn't see much in it. Just wanted to mention it. Randy Orton missed Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and most importantly, WrestleMania 32. A lot had changed since Randy Orton got injured. AJ Styles debuted, Enzo yeah. and Cass were on the main roster. Chris Jericho had an entirely new character and things were already stacked in the summer of 2016 yet you add randy orton upon his return wwe had already announced a match between the beast brock lesnar and himself for SummerSlam. as strange as it sounds this was a very fresh match yeah. orton's first appearance came at battleground what was more shocking than this match happening was orton wearing pants here <laughs> orton was so gracious and humble about being back and most importantly he was motivated he was so excited that he didn't mind sharing the ring with chris jericho y2j was a bit worried about taking an rko and threatening to hit a code breaker out of nowhere he relayed orin on what happened in the past year and best of all he wanted to give him the gift of jericho oh <laughs> he got scared orin said he looks like ellen and was warned about brock lesnar and basically, Chris Jericho's like, Suplex City was on the horizon. But this is where Jericho got curious. Why is it that both men have been in the company so long, yet they never faced off? And claimed mm. Orn was scared of Brock Lesnar. For him, it was about having an epic return. Facing Brock Lesnar is necessary. He can't face a random like Fandango. And this shut up <laughs> Jericho. So he told him what's going to happen at SummerSlam. Brock is going to take him to Suplex City. Was this a problem? No, because he was prepared to take 20 suplexes. But all he needed to do is hit one RKO. No enhancement needed. Now yeah. looks kind of stupid. That was that was a that was a wild uh, little jab there, bro. He said no enhancement needed for that one. I was like, oh, oh boy, my boy Randy spitting the venom for real. Hearing that, but it was clearly a reference to Lesnar. You see, Brock Lesnar failed a drug test ahead of UFC 200. Chris Jericho is a spokesperson of Lesnar, called Orin a stupid idiot. He claimed these were his words, so he was going to be exempt for taking a beating. And he started pressing Orn to hit an RKO. Ah, nope. Oh, uh, there it is. <laughs> RKO out of nowhere. Very entertaining segment. Chris Jericho was in amazing form, 
at this point and could do no wrong. Randy was welcomed back with open arms by the fans and he returned to the squared circle as a member of the SmackDown roster. The draft and brand split were in full swing. He joined a core group of veterans such as Kane, John Cena, and The Miz. Speaking of The Miz, Orton's first match back was against him later that week. Miz was absolutely dominant, but all Orton had to do was hit, hit the RKO, RKO like that. I thought he was going to Booker T Miz and was going to wait a minute to pin him, but he ended up hitting another RKO to win the match. By the looks of it, the man was in form. But what did Paul Heyman think? You guys know how he starts the promo, promoting the hell out of Brock Lesnar. Uh -huh. He shockingly said that Lesnar is going to entertain the fans. Not in the traditional way that WWE does. It's politically incorrect. It's violent. He said that Lesnar doesn't need to step up to the new era. It's the contrary, the opposite. The new era needs to step up to Brock Lesnar. There's no attempts at courting favor from Lesnar. None of that. And talks about Orin shocking the world are ridiculous. He hears voices. Well, how many tell you Lesnar's going to take you to Suplex City? <laughs> if you're not, well, his mind is filled with nonsense. If it's the opposite, then Orin should listen to Heyman and said what's going to happen at SummerSlam. He shouted that Orin will never hit an RKO on Lesnar. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, Ooh, an RKO. I that was such a good. This is why I give props to WWE and their production and how they frame up things. You're looking at the hard cam. Well, they're looking at the hard cam. Paul Heyman's talking. They have the camera exclusively on Brock, and they do this pan in. Slowly but surely panning in while Paul Heyman's saying, you'll never hit an RKO on the beast. You'll never hit an RKO on Brock Lesnar. And all of a sudden, bop, he get hit with it. That was good. The, the way they set that up, that was a cool visual. I remember watching it live. I thought that shit was cool. Nowhere. I can't overstate how awesome this moment was. It was random. It was sudden. It was something straight from the 2000s. The fact that they actually pulled a surprise on, man. Yeah. This is, this is what it's all about. Like, if they do this every once in a while, it's nice. And they were doing it in the beginning of the brand split. It was like, hey, we want to show you guys we actually changed. But they did, of course. And yeah. Lesnar was almost ecstatic. Yeah. Everything about this program was exciting. Yes. It just was. It was hype. In an effort to prevent a situation like Raw, security were in place for Orin's match with Fandango the next night on SmackDown. <laughs> he was doing business as usual when Lesnar ran in uh -huh. and dropped him with an F5. Yep. Both men shared the accolade of being two of the youngest world champions, and Randy said that he lost respect for Brock when he left. He felt that he wasn't the same guy that he thought he was after leaving. He's like, oh... Lesnar turned out to be the guy that I didn't think he was. Brock, on the other hand, saw the Viper as someone who was beneath him. He's a mega <laughs> superstar. Orin, he's a star. Their RKO was a sign. He wanted Brock to know that he's the man. Problem was, the Beast didn't see him that way. He's just a man. And Heyman described him as a surfer that meets a shark. Orin was eager to kill the legend of Brock Lesnar. And when asked how he was going to stay in form ahead of SummerSlam, Orin assured everyone that it takes one RKO to get to Viperville. I'll this was so good, bro. This was so fucking entertaining. Something fresh. This was good. I just didn't know how the match was going to end, though. But, uh, yeah, this was, this was good. Roberto Del Rio thought it was a joke like Disneyland. So Oren wanted to give him a VIP ride. Del Rio pushed Oren very far, isolated that arm, and even got himself disqualified. But the RKO got him out of a tough situation. On the final Raw before SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman gave their final thoughts on SummerSlam. Before Heyman could speak, Heath Slater, of all people, interrupted. Now, this guy was so damn desperate. He was trying to find any way to get a contract, even if he had to piss off Brock Lesnar. Slater asked for a chance <laughs> to face oh Brock Lesnar, and it was all jokes from their side. Heyman moved on like Slater was a jobber, and he roared over being disrespected. He's like, yep. hey, what is up? He knew he would get his ass kicked, but he had a family. Lesnar yep. knew where he was coming from and said that he's got kids, too, before bringing him into the ring. <laughs> all to tell him that he doesn't give a shit about, about his kids. kids. Let's I was like, it's GG's for him, bro. GG's for Heath, bro. That nigga, hey! I was like, bro, they sent this man out here to get fucking destroyed. Tell it another man, I don't give a shit about your kids and proceed to beat you up. That's cold. Lesnar <laughs> gave him two options, and even though Slater made his decision, he accomplished nothing. Yeah. Now that was over with, Heyman spoke again. With now, he on. had to sell the fans on the match and how good Orin is. Problem is, Brock doesn't believe anything he says. Nobody could stand up to him, not even a 12-time champion. Very simple builds for the match. They were keeping them separate a lot. I think it would have been cool to see a brawl, but it is what it is. Yeah. This match was something of epic proportions. Randy Orton, one of the very top guys in WWE, a man that reigned atop the company in Lesnar's absence, and mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar on the other side, a behemoth, a man that topples any challenge that comes his way, and I personally don't remember my prediction for this match, but I had high hopes. 
That's what it comes down to. It felt like a match that was too big to fail. You know those type of matches. Now let's yeah. talk about it. Lesnar easily took control. He threw yeah. Orin around repeatedly with the German suplexes, and I lost count. This man was tossing him around like he was nothing. Orin yeah. didn't put up much of a fight. He was being bullied around, but all yeah. it took was one RKO okay, on yo. the announce table. Rock was so out of depth at this point, he took a second rope DDT and RKO, but he still kicked out. Mm -hmm. Rock quickly rebounded with an F5 and delivered some rough shots to the face that busted Randy Orton. This yeah. led to the referee stopping the match and awarding the victory to the Beast, and even then, he continued the yeah. assault, leading to Shane McMahon coming out. Lesnar ended up dropping yeah. him as well, and it was a strange match. I didn't like it. It was paced horribly, and yes, Orton did have his moments, but it didn't live up to the hype. It didn't, because all we did see was Randy Orton get destroyed. Like, he got victimized. He got busted open legit. Pool of blood leaking out of his skull. That's all we got. And then Shane McMahon comes out there. And he gets F5 for his troubles. Like, it didn't live up to what I think a lot of fans were expecting. Still a, a very sick moment, but it didn't live up. Not to mention, he suffered a concussion. And he yeah. suffered a concussion the hard way. Lesnar yeah. literally ripped him open, forced him to bleed, and they did it the hard way. It's crazy how they yeah. actually booked this match and allowed yeah. for Orin to get hurt like that. It's very strange. Yeah. I believe Shane McMahon was supposed to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. They were starting to build the program up here. But, man, Randy Orton really got shafted here. Yeah. I think that's a reason why he got that super push later on. It's to owe up to this problem over here. Uh, I, I just didn't like the way the match went. And he doesn't need help. You know, it's Randy Orton. At the end of the day, Randy Orton's a 12-time champion. He does not need help. But in a situation like this with a, a guy who is a little bigger or stronger booked than him, I think it should have been a little closer than it was because Lesnar basically decimated and destroyed mm -hmm. him. I just didn't think uh, it was a good match. Now, there's a counter to this. This is one thing to mention. It's understandable why they did it. You see, Brock Lesnar just came off of a UFC 200 victory. They're yeah. bringing him back to the WWE. Obviously, he's going to destroy one of the biggest wrestlers. It makes sense. Yeah. Which leads me to another point. Why have the match? Randy Orton returned. He needed momentum, obviously, because at the end of the day, he's returning star. He's going to bring a lot of value to the SmackDown brand. Why book the match? Answer to that is I'm assuming they needed a big marquee main event. Mm -hmm. You can't just have Finn Balor and Seth Rollins main event. Well, you could, obviously, but they probably didn't see it that way. So I was happy they booked this match, but timing was bad. Mm -hmm. If this happened a year later... I'm pretty sure it would have been better because they didn't have to, like, protect Brock Lesnar as hard as they would have. They were going to protect him. He was going to win this match, whether it's somewhere in 2015, 16, 17, 18, or even 19. He was going to always win this match, no doubt about it. But I'm sure it would have went better in other years because in 2016, there was a UFC element. So he was always going to win. On from here, went on to feud with the Wyatt family. Fair point, I fair was point. actually going to include it in this video, but things got too complicated. I'll eventually do it, of course. Orange return was hindered by an injury. Who knows what he would have done at WrestleMania 32. Who knows if he would have been a face, but I just want to talk about it here. So, yeah. Right, what would you guys think of Randy Orton's face turn? Please comment down below, and that's the first video. Make sure you hit. Hey, man, this was great. This was fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this a like right here. This is great. This is this was fantastic. Right here, this, this shows exactly why Randy Orton is one of the best to ever do it. Um, he had some very interesting back and forths and feuds. And even though the Brock versus uh, Randy Orton match should have definitely been a lot better um, just because of who they are, it, it should have been booked a lot better. Um, at the end of the day, that ending was still super wild. It, it's an ending that people will always remember. The dude legitimately got busted open hard way and caught a concussion. We still don't know how that helped anybody else other than Brock. And, you know, the whole Shane McMahon stuff was kind of weird, too. That didn't fall through. Um, but it still was memorable for the lead up and the build up and even just that particular moment or whatnot. But it definitely could have been better, man. But either way, Randy Orton is that guy. So comment down below. Let me know. How did you guys feel about Randy Orton's face turn around this time period? And uh, what was your favorite moment from his face turn around this time period as well? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel. Road to 150 k I'm still young, speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.